All right, so in the last video, we replaced the temperature sensor and the thermostat in my 2005 Nissan Xterra. Uh, the good news is uh, the temperature is running a lot better, but when I was letting it sit, it was still getting a lot hotter than it should. So what I'm gonna do next is work on the water pump. Now, the water pump's a pretty involved process. You need to take quite a bit out of the front of the motor. The manuals will suggest that you get under the car and access it from there. Uh, a lot of people can't jack their car up high enough or uh, don't have a car lift. So I'm gonna do it with the car sitting on the ground and just access it from the top of the uh, engine compartment. So uh, we're gonna have to remove the fan shroud, the drive belts, uh, the loosen the timing chain to get the water pump off and uh, a lot more stuff. So we better get started. So just like my previous video, since we're gonna be replacing cooling components, we're gonna have to actually drain all the coolant again. Uh, and in this case, I'm actually going to retain the coolant because I filled it up literally yesterday. So uh, when, you're, when you're taking out the coolant, make sure you're putting it in a container that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it, really anything in it at all. So clean out whatever container you're gonna put it in, set it aside, and then when you're done, you can funnel it back in and uh, you don't have to worry about spending another 40 bucks or whatever it is for the Nissan coolant. So I have to go take off the pan. So just like the last video, uh, take off the pan on the bottom and then you can access the petcock at the bottom of the radiator to remove all the fluid. All right, while that's draining, let's talk about organization for a second. Uh, when you're doing a job that involves removing a lot of components from your engine, you're gonna wanna make sure that you organize the bolts and the different materials that you remove from the car to make sure that you put them on in the right way and you're using the correct screws and the correct bolts that were originally used with the part uh, when putting that back on. So uh, what works for me is taking a post-it note and setting them out on a table and just basically labeling each individual part that you remove. So for instance, here I says bottom guard or skid plate and I put all the screws in there in this little spice jar and then I'm gonna do that the same way all the way down and so that way I know when I'm reassembling it'll be faster, it'll be a heck of a lot easier and I'm not gonna screw anything off. Another component, especially with body panels and uh, motor covers is you just stick the screws right back into their ports and let them sit there. Once you set this aside and that way when you put it back on you instantly know that this is the part that I need to put on and here's the screws that I need to use. Now to get to our water pump and everything we need to remove, we need to remove the fan shroud first. Underneath the car you're going to find that there's multiple clips that you need to remove. It comes off in multiple pieces. So one here and one over here. Now, this is the front of the vehicle, that way. So unclip these just by pushing your fingers together and you can pull the shroud over top of that clip. Do the same over there and that should pull away from the bottom and you'll be able to pull it out of the bottom of the motor. For now, that should be all we have to do underneath the motor. To get the top half of the fan shroud out, there's a few screws you need to remove. You need one here, one here, and you also need to get the upper radiator hose out of the way, and you need to remove this overflow out of the top of the radiator fill cap, pull that away, and the shroud should be able to come right out. All right, two things to know on removing the fan shroud. There was an electrical connector down on the left side that needs to be removed and pulled away from the shroud. And also the electric fan needs to be removed along with the shroud. So uh, just remember that. Don't try to yank it out uh, like I was doing uh, without taking the electric fan out as well. Uh, you don't want to damage any of those components. So right now, uh, I can see the front of the motor. Obviously you want to inspect the inside of your radiator, make sure that there's no bent fins, no obvious damage done to it, um, either by you know accident or by you pulling the shroud out. Or shroud out. Uh, so next to come off is the fan, and then after the fan, there is a uh, false 
uh, excuse me, a false pulley for a water pump false pulley, which I think is ridiculous. Why don't they just put the water pump there? Uh, and then you have to remove the dry belts as well. So that's coming off next. All right, now I decided to take the actual plastic fan off of the motor first, or excuse me, off the clutch first. But, uh, so the fan was here, the clutch is here, and the uh, actual bolts that you need to remove are behind the clutch. That will take it off of the pulley. You can take this pull assembly off, that will make taking the actual uh, belts off a lot easier. And then obviously what we're trying to get at is actually behind this. Uh, I don't know if it'll, nope, it won't show us with the light, but uh, it's actually behind this, there's a whole bracket system we need to remove to actually get to the access for the water pump and the access for the Tommy belt tensioner, which is to the left of it. All right, so uh, a few things I uh, wanted to mention here. Now to remove the belt, okay, you have to push down on this here. This is the belt tensioner. So if you push down on this, you'll see that it moves and that's gonna loosen the belt. That will allow you to remove it from the actual pulley. Uh, what I did, and I made a mistake doing it, was take this pulley off first. Um, the reason being, the, there's a lot of tension on it, first of all, so when I loosened it to take off the fan clutch, when I pulled the fan clutch off, it actually popped and uh, gave me a nice little scar in my radiator. So learn from my mistake, do not uh, pull the clutch off first, pull off the actual belt first using this tensioner, and that way you don't have to worry about uh, yanking the clutch and smacking into your radiator. Uh, also, on this tensioner, I actually had to loosen this just a little bit to get this to start moving. Um, this is not necessary unless it, it will not budge. Um, I actually had some belt squeal, and so it actually could have been because uh, this particular piece was seized and it was not pushing on the belt hard enough. So um, I had to loosen this, it now moves freely, uh, and then I tightened it back up to a proper, uh, proper tension. Uh, if you do decide to uh, pop this to make it a little easier to move, don't, uh, do not unscrew it very far, just enough to get this to start moving, because um, this is obviously under, under tension, so you don't really wanna, wanna mess with that. So next we have to remove uh, this bracket here, this whole system, and then if you see this little area here, that is where our water pump is, and this part here is where the timing, uh, timing chain tensioner is. We'll have to access that area and that area, obviously to pull the water pump out, and this area to uh, take the tension off the timing chain so we can remove the water pump. All right, moving on. All right, so with that out of the way, you can see uh, pretty clearly the panel for the timing chain uh, tensioner and also the water pumps. So we gotta remove those uh, and see what we're dealing with. All right, so I can't stress the importance of this next part uh, enough. These are watertight, so they have sealant around them. Uh, it, it could be, I'm assuming it's some sort of RTV uh, liquid sealant, uh, but you don't want to mess up the surface of either the cover or the surface that it presses against on the actual uh, cylinder block. So be very gentle when taking these off. I have a gasket scraper that I'm going to slide underneath and uh, kind of push and get underneath with, uh, without trying to actually scrape anything. Uh, and then once they're off, I have to clean up both sides because uh, you're going to have to end up reapplying your uh, silicone or RTV uh, once you put it back on. All right, so now that we've removed the cover to the timing chain tensioner and the uh, actual water pump, you see that we're kind of in the guts of the motor now. So uh, there's the water pump, and here is the timing chain tensioner. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this pin out here, and we're going to push this plunger 
into the body of this tensioner and then we're going to put this stopper back in so it takes the tension off of the timing chain. Now the, the um, factory service manual says that you need to actually uh, remove this actual entire tensioner. I'm going to try to get away with not doing that. Um, the reason being is that when you're taking bolts out of something like this, uh, you run the risk of actually dropping bolts into here, which is uh, completely sealed off. So it would be an absolute utter nightmare if you were to drop a bolt into that area. So be very, very careful um, when removing bolts from this if you do. And then also here in the water pump itself, you have three bolts and they're actually recessed behind, uh, or excuse me, recessed inside of the block here. So if you do remove them and they fall out and fall into here, then you have a heck of a lot more work to do. So I'm going to take, remove this pin, push this plunger back, try to get the, uh, get the timing chain nice and slack. And then that way I have room here to uh, actually pull out the water pump with the timing chain out of the way. Moving on, uh, we do have a lot of looseness now. You'll see that the timing chain moves around pretty freely in here. Um, and so that's actually achieved by turning the crank. Now you're gonna have to do the same thing here for the water pump. When you uh, take the crank and actually, you need to turn it counterclockwise and that actually loosens the timing chain on the uh, water pump itself. So you're gonna see, okay, do you see when I turned it, that chain moved? And so now it's got a lot of slack. Now you wanna keep doing that until there's all, as much slack in there as you can get, which that looks like it's about it. Uh, it's flopping around here. If I push any harder on the actual um, crankshaft, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna start changing the cycle and it's gonna start tightening up again. So there's gonna be, oh, just like that. All right, I guess we gotta keep going. But uh, what you need to do is once that's loosened, you have the three bolts to remove and then this should slide out. Now what you wanna be careful about is getting those actual fins to hit the side. So you have to pull it straight out and make sure that you're not actually uh, hitting either this or more importantly inside of here because there's O-rings that will keep the antifreeze inside and uh, you know away from this chamber which is oil. So I'm going to turn this clockwise till I get a loose chain, pull this out and then we'll be ready to put the new one back in. All right, now I've removed the bolts very carefully from the water pump housing. Uh, and I have my new one here and I want to show you how the water pump that's actually inside the motor right now needs to be removed. Now this is the, uh, this would be the top here. So you have the top, the bottom, and the right side bolt. Now this is not threaded, but these actual holes are threaded. So what that means is that, and this is not the right size, but what that means is you need to take a bolt and you need to put it in here and actually it will push against the body and pull the uh, water pump out of the motor. Now, the, you're probably thinking that's weird because it's threaded in the motor too, but these are actually a few sizes bigger than what the actual hole is in the block. So it's designed to take a certain screw for this size, push against the other hole, and then pull the actual water pump out of the body uh, as, it, uh, as you screw these in. Um, I don't have anything that fits in here, so um, I'm gonna go buy some, and then I'll be able to show you. Uh, I've tried the other bolts that we've already taken off the motor to uh, kind of hope that th it would actually fit this. Uh, it does not. I haven't found any, so I'm going to go purchase some, and uh, we'll be able to do it, and then I'll let you know what size it is uh, once I buy it, so that way you can just pick it up before starting. Okay, so it turns out that these screws are an M8, and uh, I found these, but you want ones that are, have threads all the way down, and get ones that are pretty long, uh, so you can kind of screw it all the way out. This one will probably pop the first O-ring, but it may not pop the second, so, uh, but at least I'll have some leverage to kind of yank onto them uh, to pull it the rest of the way out. So I'm gonna screw these in, push the water pump against the body, and uh, hopefully it'll come out without a problem. All right, so our screws are in. Now you're gonna to wanna to do uh, just a few cranks, so keep going until they feel like they've got pressure on them, and then just turn just a few times on each one, and you should feel 
the water pumps start to come out and you can start to feel the actual uh, O-rings popping out when you, when you actually go in and turn them. So I'm gonna keep turning these slowly, a few on each side, and then wait for it to come out. All right, so here is the old water pump. Um, I'm a little bummed to say that it actually looks really good. Um, the tines are really fine. There's really there's nothing wrong with the uh, little impeller. The O-rings look good. The gear looks good. Um, there's no change uh, in movement. If I try to move the top and bottom simultaneously, they, they're stuck together. Um, so this actually looks like it was in good condition, but it is good to uh, get these things replaced anyways, just to kind of knock it off the list of possible problems for uh, cooling issues. So I'm going to reseat the new one. Uh, you basically do that by reversing what you just did. You don't need to worry about these, of course. You just push the other one in until you uh, get a pop. Screw it in. All right, make sure to be careful when you're running that timing chain against the outside of this that you're not uh, pushing this body against the uh, part of the chain. You don't want to do any damage to it. Uh, and then once it's in, make sure the tines on the timing chain are just right. And then we're going to work on putting the timing uh, tensioner back in. All right, so I have the new water pump already seated. Um, all I had to do was just line up the three holes. Uh, there's really only one way it can go in based on the shape of this opening. So um, top screw here, right screw here, bottom screw here, no screw on the left, and you basically just push it in, and I just kind of gave it a nice uh, wallop with my, with my fist just to get it seated. Um, and then obviously when you put the screws in, it'll seat it the rest of the way. So uh, I'm gonna get those in. Again, I cannot stress enough how careful you have to be uh, hovering screws over this little area here. Uh, if you drop them in, you're in a world of hurt. So uh, make sure you be careful about that. And then we'll talk about scraping this and getting new RTV put on for, uh, for the sealant. All right, now before we put the covers back on the access ports, we need to make sure that we have taken all of the RTV off of it. Uh, I'm gonna use a gasket scraper here and basically just gently remove all of the old gasket and basically just, you have to make sure that you're not marring the surface of the cover itself. Get as much off as you can as you're doing that and you need to do the same to the actual block as well. Uh, there's gonna be some of the RTV on, on this side and on the block. So all of it needs to be removed before doing that. And then you need to put a bead of your gasket maker onto the face of this, face of the cover. And then you need to put it onto the block and just screw it in and, and obviously let it cure. Now what I'm using is actual water pump and thermostat housing uh, gasket maker. I found this just at the local auto parts store. It was just a few bucks. Uh, this may not be enough. Hopefully it is because uh, I need to do two. Remember we have both of those covers. Hopefully it, it works. If not, I'll let you know uh, to get something a little bit bigger than this. But I'm going to go ahead and scrape these off. Scrape off the block. Make sure everything's gone. And then put that RTV on and cover up the water pump housing. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the tensioner. Okay, so I'm ready to put the tensioner uh, back into the motor. Now, a few things on this. Um, what, you, what you don't know about me is that I severely lack patience. So, uh, what, when I went to remove the original tensioner, which is this one here, uh, the, what, what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to push these little pins in and push this cylinder all the way into this body. All right, let me do this here. Now you'll see that this cylinder is not moving. It's not going into the body. So in theory, you were supposed to push this in. There's a little hole here. You put a little lock pin in here and then it comes right out just fine. Well, mine obviously, as you can see, does not go into the body. Now what I ended up doing was taking it out while it was still under tension. Um, really not smart, not a good move to do. 
Um, do not do that. Uh, what I had to end up, so once that was out, uh, I realized that this particular tensioner is either broken or there's just something wrong with it in the sense that I can't use this one anymore. So uh, I bought a new one. So here's the new one. Now, when you're taking that tensioner out, your piston should go all the way into the body, just like this. And this is the stop pin that they have pre-installed into this one. And that's, you push it all the way in, you slide that stopper in, and theoretically, you unscrew it and it slides right out without having to you know, push against the timing chain to get it to pop out. So if yours isn't doing this, uh, you know, I don't really know what to say. You need to find a way to get it out and you may need to have, uh, end up getting a new one, which in this case, the cheapest one I could find in my area was almost $90. Uh, one other thing to note, if you are going to maintain your original tensioner, this gasket on the rear is exceptionally fragile. It is like wafer thin, uh, and it is very easy to tear. In fact, I tore this one trying to get this one back in um, <laughs> under tension. So uh, definitely, if you are going to try to maintain your current tensioner, be very, very careful about this, this gasket. Uh, it is, I mean, if you look at it wrong, it tears. So be aware of that. So I'm gonna get this one in. I'm gonna get the new one in. Uh, we're gonna tension it up, um, put the cover on that, and then it's reassembly time. All right, so I have that installed and uh, I made sure that these were nice and tight, the two uh, bolts that are holding it on. So now, uh, theoretically, all we should have to do is uh, pull this and this cylinder will pop out and put tension on it. So let's see, there you go, perfect. So now we have the tension that we need on the timing chain, it's secured, and now we just gotta put the cover on. All right, so I have both covers on. Uh, make sure that you follow the directions for the RTV that you use. Uh, this particular one says to wait, uh, finger tighten, wait an hour, and then you can tighten down all the way and then wait 24 hours for fluids. Uh, if you need the job done quicker, I'm sure there's quicker setting RTV, but uh, this one uh, it can wait. So now I'm gonna put the rest of the brackets on for the serpentine temp tensioner and then start reassembling everything. All right, so I went ahead and put the bracket back on and I'm ready to put the belt on. Uh, the, really the only thing to mention here is that you should reinstall your fan clutch uh, before putting the belt back on because you just have this little housing here that, uh, that, you, that you slide on to this bracket and until you have this on, you can't really put any tension on this using the belt. So uh, put this back on first and then reinstall the belt. Now installing the belt, the only thing really to mention uh, and in this particular vehicle, it's pretty easy because it uses what's called a castellated belt, which is just these grooves here. Uh, really, the only thing to mention is that the grooves, obviously, you have grooved uh, pulleys. So put the grooves down, face down here, and then the back of the belt sits on these, the smooth pulleys. So uh, obviously, you want to take a photo or video when you originally take it off just to double check and make sure that you have it on the right way. Uh, but with these belts, it's pretty darn easy uh, simply because it's castellated. So you can see where... Uh, it faces down and then faces up when you're installing it. So away we go. Let's get this belt back on and keep going. All right, so seemingly the easiest way to get this installed is get it around every pulley, especially the one at the bottom, the crank, and then uh, leave just this top, this dead pulley off. This is just the one that spins freely, doesn't really do anything. Uh, leave that off, and so that way when you push down, on your tensioner to get slack, you're working right here next to it. You're not having to kind of mess around and tor you know, get your hands down here to try to get it on a lower pulley or anything like that. So we're ready to do this. We have, the, we have it on everything else. And then we're gonna push down the tensioner and slap it on this last pulley and it should be installed. All right, so it's on. Now, what's important here is just ensuring that uh, you have it all lined up correctly. So for instance, up here, you wanna make sure that it's sitting inside the grooves and all of them are sitting correctly. Uh, if you don't, you'll start it up and you'll hear squealing or it'll just hop or even damage the belt. So 
Just uh, visually verify underneath that each pulley is sitting correctly and uh, that's it, you're done. So you can move on to the next thing, which in our case is going to be the plastic fan. We're gonna tighten these down, put the plastic fan on, and then we have the shroud and reconnecting all of the water. All right, now I'm ready to put the plastic fan on and I realized there's something I wanted to tell you uh, when you're doing this. Make sure that you put the fan on the right way. Technically, this can be flipped. Uh, it's symmetrical, so uh, you can actually install it either way. So make sure that you read here, it says, uh, in this case, it says the word front right here. So just make sure you're doing it that way. You don't wanna be, you know, um, pushing hot air into the radiator that will literally uh, reverse the effect of the cooling system. So uh, make sure that this says front and install it the right way, and then you can go on to the shroud and the rest of the water. All right, now when you're reinstalling the fan shroud, uh, if you remember, we had to take out this electric motor with the shroud itself. Uh, this shroud cannot get around this fan. So uh, it's gonna have to be the same going in, so make sure that you line up this electric fan. There's two grooves in the bottom, and then there's a little groove up top where this sits. And also, there's an electrical piece here. You wanna make sure that's in place and ready to go. And then you can slide the entire thing in as one unit, and then uh, you won't have to worry about doing it separate. All right, so the fan shroud and the electric fan are put back together. Uh, for this particular one, it should be the same on yours. Uh, two screws at the top for the shroud itself, one screw at the top for the electric fan. There's an electrical connector down the right side, and then there is actually four little slots that you need to slide uh, two in the shroud and two in the electric fan into on the bottom. So. Um, my, my recommendation is set it in here so it looks like it's at the right height. Go underneath the car, then you, that way you can kind of guide them into those slots and then come back up and you're, you'll be able to secure the screws in here. After that, I grabbed uh, these here, my overflow and my top radiator hose. I put those back into place uh, and it looks like all I have left is the air, so the, obviously the air box and all of the air going into the throttle body. And then also be sure before you fill the car back up that you put the plug back in at the bottom of the radiator that we used to um, drain. So other than that, that's next. All right, so the top part of the motor has been assembled. We have the air in, all the hoses are connected, the fan shroud's in. Uh, really the last two things to do to actually get the car back in one piece is to install the lower fan shroud, which is just a few easy clips, uh, basically just reversing what we did to take it off. And then obviously we have that skid plate that we wanna reinstall as well to get the car back into one piece. Right now I wanna talk uh, retrospectively about the job and uh, some pointers that I can give you guys to uh, have you not run into the same issues that I did during this demonstration. So first and foremost, be very careful removing your fan clutch uh, from the actual pulley. I, as, as you saw, I pulled the pulley off and it uh, snapped off, so to speak. It popped off quickly and uh, so quickly I couldn't react and I actually pulled the fan clutch right into the face of my radiator. Uh, definitely uh, not smart of me. You know, that's something that you should kind of work off slowly, but I just went brute force on it, pulled it off and hit the radiator. So when removing that, uh, my recommendation is probably just grab a, a mallet or any soft headed hammer, uh, just smack the side gently and it'll work itself off of that pulley and it'll come off slowly. So that's one thing. Um, also, uh, if you read any directions about replacing your water pump or taking the fan clutch off, it'll recommend that you take the fan clutch, bring it in, get it either um, get it serviced if that's possible, I don't think it is, or uh, replace it at this point. Um, I did not replace my fan clutch, uh, and you're going to see why in a later video. Next is the, the timing chain tensioner. Uh, the timing chain tensioner, you definitely want to be careful with this. Uh, it turns out mine was broken, uh, so the 
actual piston did not go into that little cylinder like it was supposed to. Uh, I ended up pulling mine out in one piece having to replace it. Uh, but if you can get your piston to go in, uh, you definitely want to get a piece of wire. Now, uh, this, is a, this is what came with the new one. This is a push pin that actually goes in and holds that piston in. Uh, but this is uh, probably, the wire that I bought earlier will probably work for something else. Uh, I bought a, what it's called, 36 by 0.32, uh, they called it music wire or lock wire, piano wire, any of those things uh, will work. Just make sure it's rigid, and then when you get that uh, piston to go into that cylinder, you can slide that in and it locks it in place. That will make your life a heck of a lot easier uh, when removing that tensioner. Uh, lastly, uh, we want to talk about the actual water pump itself. Um, I had to go find a uh, bolt that would fit the outside of the body to push the water pump out from the block. Uh, buy that first. It was an M8, uh, so metric M8, and uh, get something long, like a 50 millimeter, 30 millimeter, something that uh, once you have it in and the water pumps out, you can actually just use those as handles to pull the water pump out uh, and you're not, you have a little more control over it. All right, well, uh, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, requests, uh, just write them in the comments below and look out for some new videos coming out. I have a lot of work to do on this guy. Uh, some other things include the uh, IAC motor, which is in the throttle body. I need to replace that. Uh, there is a weird issue with my electronic, or excuse me, my emergency brake. Uh, it's, you have to pull it like all the way up uh, to get it to engage. And even when it's engaged, you can still kind of push the car around. So uh, there's some adjustment that needs to be done there. And also another big job I need to do is replacing the fuel pump. The level gauge is not working and uh, it's throwing a code saying that there's some voltage issues with it. So uh, stay tuned for those. And I'll talk to you soon.